Oh, is it okay? That seems to be such a shame. He might have injured himself. Let's be shoulder. I'll jump up and the place will just erupt. We're doing all this party stuff. Hongering and just goes mental. So welcome to the Guest Book Podcast, Nelson from VIP Waiters. How are you? I'm not too bad. Yourself, Kelly? How are you keeping? Good? I'm really well, thank you. I know we've been speaking on and off for quite a while now on Instagram, and we've built up that kind of um, rapport and friendship, and you've got lots of big things going on. But I wanted to talk about um, a little bit about VIP Waiters and and a project that you've got coming in the next six months or so. But before we do all that... I would like to know what it is that you do and what inspired you to do it. I'm a surprise singing waiter. Basically, what that means is I would normally arrive at, at say, a, a wedding. A couple would book me or, or it would be a surprise for the couple. And I would normally arrive, say, during the ceremony. I would then be ready to serve all the like, canapes and welcome drinks and that to all the guests. So I'd blend in, have a bit of a banter, see up for a bit of a laugh. And then I would, um, and then I would serve the stars, I'd serve the mains. I'd even serve the desserts and then literally last dessert hits the table. I'd walk in and literally bang crash one up, I'd fall over and it'd literally be a whole big commotion. And everyone would be like, oh, oh no, that's that poor waiter that, that you know, was hot on my dietary. He's always like chatting to me, oh no, I hope he's all right. And then literally I just jump from the floor and get everybody up and just com- create complete carnage. The place just turns <laughs> into a complete party and it just brings that whole, that whole element that people don't expect you know because they, they you know most people expect they're gonna have a bit of music in the ceremony most people might have you know a guitarist or some background music in the reception and then you know you have a band or a dj but but they don't kind of expect this because it's that whole surprise element and and people have just kind of just finished eating so it's that low point as well as so where some of the older people might be falling asleep so it's kind of like a bit <laughs> like that point where 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 it's kind of like oh it's been such a long day and all of a sudden I know I fall over and they're like, they're like oh, is it okay? Oh, oh, that's really, 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 oh, that seems to be such a shame. He might have injured himself. And then I'll be like, oh, it's my shoulder. And, then, and then literally I'll jump up and the place will just erupt and they'll be thinking, oh my God, we're doing all this party stuff. And, you know, napkin waving and congering and literally just goes, just goes mental. And I mean, the, the best thing is it's kind of catering for the chosen guests because, you know, people pay so much money for like, weddings and like the wedding breakfast in general and and the people that are like their 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 chosen family and friends that are there you know they're pretty much they're there for the whole day so by the time it gets to the evening when the band or the dj get into a stride it kind of like they kind of might miss that because they might have children they might be oh i think we we, we kind of need to go now Mm -hmm. Um, you know it's been so nice and that but it's been a lovely day and they've kind of missed the fun so this is kind of like the as my company says vip it's like the vip fun for those guests you know like wow. they get the specialist treatment you know they get they get the entertainment that kind of no one else gets so they get so when they come out from their meal they're all like they're like oh my god we've just been calm we've been napkin we've just been nuts. and all the all the evening guests are like whoa whoa, whoa what's going on what, 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 and, and they're like yeah oh, it's that guy over there oh do you know and, and all of a sudden it's like it's like they in one respect they feel like they've missed out the evening guests but in the same respect the chosen guests have had this this amazing time that they wouldn't have got if they weren't the chosen guests and stuff. <laughs> So that's, yeah, the that's, chosen that's, one. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that that's the ethos behind it. So that's pretty much how I I tend to portray it. I mean, I, I got into it because uh, I literally, pardon the pun, I kind of fell into it. I was working for another agent, uh, which uh, ego side I was like the blue eyed boy as such. And the this particular one of the biggest uh, singing rate companies I've worked for, the two biggest over the years, uh, they literally were. Um, contacting this other agent because they had another singer that worked for them and asking if, if they knew of anybody that'd be interested and um and the agent I was working for they went there oh yeah Nelson did and I was like I was like yeah I'll give it a go so literally first one I went and did on my own as a lead I literally came in fell over and the rest is history that's about six years ago I've been a singer right now oh so, wow yeah. so do you do all that on your own so do you just blend in as a waiter exactly and then that. you get everyone yeah. up on yeah. your own yeah so literally literally it's a case of blending in which so uh, some couples whether they've seen it or not they uh, they may feel that um uh, price point wise you know that your, your performance is only normally about half hour 45 minutes but it's so much energy involved um 
but the actual performance itself actually starts so much earlier in the day. So you're there for the whole day. So it's not even like you can do one, go off and do another. Um, it's you're pretty much designated as that, that you're there for that couple's day, and it, you know that that's it. You're there to make that couple's day amazing, and that's that's just your time. You know, you're, you're there for the, for the whole day, so you pretty much arrive during the ceremony. So you arrive set up, and then you're pretty much ready to go as the waiter the minute all the guests come out. So they they they're under the impression straight away that you are just part of the furniture. They've seen you from that moment, so they're like, oh, he's just a waiter. And and because you're then serving the canapes and the welcome drinks, and I am I am pretty much you know a bit cheeky, so I'll be serving them. They'll be like, oh, he's a bit cheeky, and, but but the fact is they won't get any of that to start with because they'll be thinking, oh, he's just a cheeky waiter. And then literally later on, when you then fall over, and they're 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 all like, oh no, oh that's a really nice waiter. And some of the lads will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like and all probably like you know probably like, <laughs> like well like oh I'm glad he's fallen over because you're probably having a, you know you might have had a proper little banter. And then literally you jump up and they think, oh my god, it doesn't even work here. What's going on? And then literally just the place just and it's a whole different dimension. So it's a bit like a journey, isn't it? It's a bit like the whole the whole thing with with getting married or just life in general. You know, you're planning out kind of a journey. Your your performance is like building a story. You know, you're kind of like for the moment I I start with the welcome drinks canapes and I'm chatting to everyone. I'm I'm the waiter, but I'm I'm obviously very chatty and they're like, oh, it's so, so nice and stuff like that. To the point that then when you do fall over and actually then give the performance of a lifetime they're kind of like wait a second it doesn't even work here so when he was talking to me earlier does he actually do the things he said he did because uh, when i speak to people they think <laughs> a minute but you said you were such and such did you make that up is your name actually nelson or, i don't get it where where's this come from and it's like that whole that whole thing it's just been one huge performance from the, the moment you arrive to pretty much the moment everyone's Sweet Caroline or Mr. Brightside <laughs> jumping around all the tables and, and literally finishing on such a high, you know, it's that it, it just brings so much energy. I would I'd pride myself on the fact that it is literally about it's about me getting everyone to do all the things that they wouldn't normally do at any other event. It, pretty much in their whole entire life. You know, I've done plenty of weddings where the couples we like, I did one not that long ago, and the groom said he didn't even know it was a surprise me, but he even said, oh, it was so nice to see like my friends and family up, but there was friends and family that you wouldn't in, have even for the life of you thought they would get up and dance and had the face on them like like as if they were a rabbit caught in the headlights they were like oh my god like that. but their bodies were dancing so they were like oh my god but their bodies were like comedy stuff and they were literally like as if like like pied piper cussing around they were doing all the things but their faces were telling them different kind of stuff so they yeah. you know literally just it, it's that thing once you get you know i promise them once i get one up, I, I get them all up you know i pretty much have everybody up just 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 going completely party the people that don't particularly want to get up because i'm getting everyone else up and i'm like no you're getting up whether you like it or not once they're up they're like i'm so glad i got up you know and it's that you know the photos the videos just the whole thing it just gives off such a such a real nice well it's, it's the memory like we just said i'm building a journey and a story as such at the wedding but then then they go on to then obviously have their own experience and and then take that away so that then not just the couples because obviously the couple themselves uh, it's their big day but as we know majority of times even though they're planning it for their big day they want all their friends and family to be there it's pretty much everything else is staged for the for the guests and such. so, so that this becomes what then is the guest way of creating their own experience to take away so they i'll have them all jumping on the tables and napkin waving and basically being part of the performance so they go away and they go, oh yeah, because at such and such is wedding, we were doing this and we were doing that, and and then you know, like in years to come later, they'll still be talking about it. You know, yeah. they, they won't be going, they won't be going. Do you remember at your wedding you had blue flowers? And the bride goes, I don't even remember what flowers I had. <laughs> I looked at the pictures the other day, but I do remember now. Whereas they'll be going, oh, I remember jumping up and down the tables, and that's you know, that's that's no, that's not taken away from any other supplier. But the fact is, with anybody in the wedding industry supplier wise it's not so much what they're providing it's the memories that they're providing you know like the yeah. photographer's the same the videographer's the same the venue's the same you know it, it's all about being a personable and it's all about it's all about the the love aspect and the care of what of what you give as they say it's not what you say it's what you do that counts yeah. you know so the fact is if you're if you're bringing your best a game and you're making that day as amazing as it can be for that couple well then you can't do any more than that and if you're doing that and every other wedding supplier is doing exactly the same you know it ticks all the boxes it's like that you're just a you're just a little cog 
in one big machine you turning up and then basically going i'm here now what do you want me to do we're going to make this happen you know yeah. so that the bride and groom literally don't know or if they booked it the guests don't know and so that every single person's job all marries up nicely to make that day you know enhances the day as much as it can be I find that really, really cool because I've seen other people do it before, but it's like a huge group of people. And that must be like to get everyone on the same page and get everyone up. That's got to be a major operation. But like props to you for being the one person that gets everyone up in that room. I would be so scared to just like (laughs) not only like doing my own at my own wedding, doing a little speech maybe, but getting everybody up you know your aunt barbara who does, who's got a sour face and doesn't want to do anything is up like singing and dancing that's really cool i think i think sometimes it's like that peer group pressure isn't it i mean the fact is if the bride and groom have got up then really out of total respect to the bride and groom you feel kind of at one to get up don't you so the fact is the auntie barbara and that probably won't want to but once she's up and she's in the moment as we were saying with the whole the same thing of the workout thing once you're doing it you're glad you did it and, and you're glad you're part of it whereas if you sit at the sidelines and you kind of watch it go past a bit with life analogy you kind of miss the train as such or you miss the boat you know it's that it's that same thing of saying as soon as an opportunity arises, you kind of you kind of should just go with it because then you know it will at some point might pass away no one's saying you won't get the opportunity again but it's better to to take as we said fail forward and do something than it is to not do it you know so the same would be said getting the people up once they're in that moment and they're having so much fun they just love it and it's just it's just it's just overwhelming because it's that as we just said it's that it's that it's that energy i've i've been a performer for many 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 years so i'm just bringing what i know and then as we just said it's the energy level that you're bringing you're bringing your own persona as such but you're you're bringing a uh, an element of energy at that particular point like as if it's like an explosion yes hats off to me to get people up but in, in the same aspect it'd be down to the people on the day and the songs so you're only as good as your audience and yeah. the songs that have been picked but nine out of ten times they go off with a bang because at a wedding people are there to enjoy themselves they're all in good spirits so it's as if you're having the best gig of your life at every gig you know you kind of got that element where if it's not going to work there where is it going to work yeah you know, i think i did i did like the essex wedding awards last year and i had like 350 people doing napkin waving and concrete and that was just mental that was insane but they were all suppliers it wasn't even a wedding they were just uh, <laughs> they were just other suppliers and some of them had seen me before so when i arrived they were kind of looking and going oh nelson what are you doing here and they knew what i was going to do but they kind of kept it under wraps so then to have that many people just going completely mental was was absolutely legendary you know it was it was it was such a great feeling from my point of view and from and for everybody else's but without putting a slight downer on it was on that particular day in the morning it was my aunt's funeral oh, um yeah. but everything happens for a reason and when i got then asked to do the essex win the and then i found out it was on that day it was like well nan obviously wants me to do it I, I, you know everything happens for it i've got to do it and the fact that i turned up and i delivered at such a high a high professional rate is due to one of my many years of experience as a performer and secondary just capitalizing the fact that i'm there to do a job i'm bringing my energy bringing my game this is what i need to deliver because this is what i'm here to do and nobody else would have known that you know i spoke to many of the suppliers after us a few people that know and i told a couple of them and they were like mate there is no i'm ever so sorry there's no way you would have even given a second thought that that would have happened to you early in the day you know mm-hmm. went along in the funeral had the little wake thing left there came home grabbed my stuff went straight to fens fens in essex and then blended in the waiter and away we went you know but the fact is it, it was it's literally as we said it's the going from the one extreme to the other it's the same at a wedding you're kind of you're kind of falling over so it's that lull everyone's kind of like they you know they get that feeling that goes to the pit of the stomach thing oh my god somebody's hurt themselves i hope they're okay and all of a sudden, I'm jumped up and the music started. And it's like, and then it's like, all of a sudden, they're like, well, what, what's going on? And something like, it's like, whoa. And the energy just changes. So it's kind of like going from like, just in one, like that day, going from a complete low to then literally just going completely through the roof. You know, so that particular day in my life, I went from having both 
extensive feelings in that particular day you know yes I'm walking around pretending to be a waiter but from a, an emotional sense I went from a very 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 low point to then what then potentially was a ridiculously high you know off the chart kind of like vibe you know so we've got one extreme to the other but as I would say it everything happens for a reason the fact that it, it was going to be on that day meant I could not take the opportunity and I couldn't not move forward and I have to say probably even to this point now doing that was by far a game changer I mean every venue I go to every couple I speak to at a wedding venue whether it be as a preferred supplier or a wedding fair I mention it because it was such a high for me and it was such a big thing to promote. One, when I had worked for the other singing you do go out as twos. You know, I generally had done, I've done a lot on my own uh, single gigs, but you do really went out as pairs. So to then be able to go there on my own and be able to still produce that same level of of um, professionalism or level of energy, that in itself, I probably thought I'm being yeah exceptionally good at my job. As you just said, oh, oh, yourself, you're like, oh, I find it would be hard to get up and do the speak. Everyone's got their thing, and they? Everyone's got their, whether it be someone crocheting a jumper or someone uh, looking after, when well, in fact, as we know, because we've got children, looking after your children, you know, you, you're, you're trusting your children into the capable hands of someone at a, a school or a nurse or something. And, and their degree of skill for that is no, nowhere near, no, no, not any less than the degree of skill that you bring to your job mm-hmm. it's just how hard you work and how much energy you bring to it we've got children and on a daily basis you look after your children and i'm sure you give as much energy to them as you do uh, to your job but there may be days when you're not because one they're your children and secondly because it's going to be your days when you're not going to be on that high but those people that are looking after your children they've got to bring their a game every day the same as you coming to this or me going to a wedding if i turn up to a wedding or the wedding that i did at the, at the um, essex windables and i wasn't in the great place I can't I can't then allow that to 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 bleed into what I'm going to do you know mm. so everyone has a level of skill at their own chosen field that they bring and yeah a lot of people will go oh I couldn't do what you do but then I could probably turn around and go well I'm ever sorry but I couldn't do what you do you know mm. like my, my wife used to work on the um on the like on the like the little buses escorting elderly disabled people into care homes mm. I couldn't do that Physically, I could wheel people on and off the bus, but the level of care and the level of uh, social skills that you need and to be upbeat, which obviously is down to the energy on a daily basis, because those people need that. So that's a skill in itself as well. Everyone's got their, as we just said, from crochet to jumper to looking after children, to, to building a brick wall, to, to giving wedding advice, to organising a wedding, to being a photographer. Everyone's got their thing that, that, that pulls on them, that goes, this is kind of for you. You might not like it, but, but this is kind of your thing. So you either take it, you run with it, or you don't, but, but this is kind of your thing. And, 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 and everyone is noticing this is your thing. So you either provide the service or you don't, but if you do, you're going to probably be really good at it, you know, and, it, and point in fact, exactly the same as what you're doing. It's, it's that everyone has their thing and everyone has a skill. They just need to find it. It's bringing that thing that naturally that you can do into anything that you do day to day. So even if you have got like a boring job that you don't necessarily like, but you do have good social skills, it makes that job less boring because you know you're good at that one thing yeah. or a, a few things. Yeah. So you just uh, briefly mentioned that you're married. Yes. Um, so your wife's name's Karina, is that right? Karina, yeah. Can you give us a little, I say little, can you <laughs> let us know or talk to us about your love story? Like, how did you meet? Was it love at first sight? Uh, yes, yes and yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so do quite a bit. I think, I think a lot of people, even though they might then go, no, it's not love at first sight. It, it's got to kind of be, hasn't it, really? Yeah, when I, I, I met Karina... Um, we've been together nearly 20 years now and we we met at a pub in Bexleith which is now no longer there literally it was only because a friend of mine um, Mark who I've been friends with for many 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 years we were going to go for a drink in Dartford and and that's where we'd normally go and stuff and he was thinking about going to Blackheath on this particular occasion he said he was working late and he said oh we'll meet in Bexleith and I was like 
Oh, God, and we're we'll meeting Bixley. So we met in Bixley Heath in this particular pub. I was waiting for him to turn up, and he turned up, and uh, and Karina happened to be there with one of her friends, and um, or a few friends. And I just saw her, and then, and Karina even said, which is funny, because I I was I was watching her, and then there was, there was this woman that was kind of like looked like she was kind of pole dancing up me, but I was completely oblivious to that. Then Karina said, "Oh, I thought you were with that girl," and I was like, "What girl?" And she said about this girl that was dancing up me, and I was like, "I didn't even see any other girl." And I, it just so happens that I saw her. And then I kind of went over and I was just like speaking to her. However, um, as, as, as a man, however socially apt you may be or however much of a, of a Casanova you may be, when you meet the one, I would say, you're not. You're completely kind of falling over yourself. You're thinking, where's my A game gone? You know, it's yeah. kind of like, where's my lines gone? Uh, so we met, we chatted and that. We showed numbers, I got on the bus, went to, went to Dartford. And then we exchanged texts after that, and then pretty much that was that was it. We we literally met. I think it was a few days after that. Yeah, we went to we went to a pub, had lunch, and then we went then then then, then went on. We had dinner because we was only going to meet for a, a coffee as such. And then there was that thing we just got chatting, and then we went to the Cafe Rouge, had food there, and the music that was playing. Obviously, as a, as a musician, was a Jamie Cullen album. It was 20, uh, 20 something by Jamie Cullen, and there's a song called "What a Difference a Day Makes," and uh, that was playing. So that became our song. Yeah, that the rest is pretty much, I would say, history. Yeah, we've uh, yeah been together nearly twenty years. And then after that, yeah, we were seeing each other pretty much every day. We spoke on the phone every day. I mean, it's the point at one one point I was on the phone to my mobile on uh, more than a few occasions where my mobile we chatted, and then my battery ran out of my mobile. <laughs> like, we'd be speaking for like yeah for what what felt like hours. I would say oh, I'm extremely lucky. But I've got Karina. We're one of those couples that, even though I definitely think we fell in love at first sight, that we're friends. We've we spent a lot of time together in those 20 years uh, where we've been in each other's pockets on numerous times for many, 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 many times. When I, I worked abroad as a, as a George Michael and Wham tribute, I did six summers in Greece, and she came with me. So she was there pretty much every day, all day. You know, literally, we lived in each other's pockets. So uh, we were together on, you know, a lot. A lot, a lot of time, and we're still, we're still together. And I, and as most people will probably say, oh yeah, they're, they're your rock or something like that. I, she's, she's my world. I call her my world. This I wrote a song about her called My World. We I had a conversation at a, at a gig once. It was a few weeks back, and was people were just joking about how they, how they put their wife or their girlfriend's name on their phone. Has it come up? And one guy was saying about that his friends has got his wife come up as um, dream crusher on this phone. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, and this other guy said that he's got hers up as just just some, whatever her name was, her first name and her last name. And I was like, that's a bit kind of normal. And I said, oh, mine was my world. And they were like, oh, I was kind of like, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, you kind of realise very quickly how much you rely on somebody. I, I think a lot of people go through relationships where they don't, and it's all well, it's all well and good to be independent, and you want to be independent. You want to have your own things. You want to do your own stuff. But it's very. It comes quite quickly how you realise how much you rely on somebody else. Not necessarily just emotionally, but just in general. I mean, I think when you talk when you're talking to them all the time, especially if you spend a lot of time with them, you then forget what it's like to not be in a relationship. And it's that thing, you know, when then people go, oh, I'd love to be single. When you're single, you want to be in a relationship. But when you're in a relationship, you want to be single. It's that chicken egg kind of you know, catch train. So yeah. once you're in a relationship and you're, you're with that one, you can't really remember what it was like to not be with that person or to not be a couple, you know, a couple as yeah. such. I think some people rely too much on being co codependent. And so there's that weird energy of you can't live without that person. But mm. when you're with somebody that you know you're very much friends with like you say like, obviously you she's your world so everything revolves around her mm. and she'd probably be, say exactly the same about you but you know you do go off and you know you went to Greece and you did your job there and she yeah. came with you I mean she's probably very much got her own things as well so you do do things independently but mm. you're not overly like codependent on one another which can be yeah I don't, like, I don't take her, I don't take her around everywhere I, don't take I, don't, I mean, I don't carry around in my pocket. I had a friend of mine that said that said he takes his wife everywhere to say kissing a goodbye. So, that... God. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bit I extreme. Totally, I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's good. I love that kind of because I'm the same with with Jacob. Like we are very much friends as well, but it's 
like if he if he went away i still wouldn't know what to do with myself like i can't i went a very long time without being with anyone as well so i know what it's like to be single but i wouldn't i wouldn't want to go back there like it's so much better where i am people always think that it's that similar analogy of the grass being greener isn't it that the people forget very quickly uh, and they become partly complacent sometimes that that pretty much everybody does the same things we all go to the toilet we all brush our teeth we all do certain things no one is above those things as such you know natural human things that you do have you farting all those kind of stuff you know and even as if to point them i go oh i really don't want to be that person because this person does such and such and such and you're like yeah but you'll probably find that the next person will do those as well it's like I, i'm a i'm a total believer that it's not karina's perfect things that make me love her it's her imperfect things so yeah. things that she doesn't do well or the things that i find funny which make her her, which make me love her more, you know? But I know she's going to kill me for saying this. But when I first met her, uh, she used to say, I, I used to say, what, what's A and A? And she used to say 15. So we had this ongoing joke. And she's not, she, she is quite clever. But we used to have this ongoing joke about that. And the same as when she when she writes certain things, there might be certain words that she write and she'll misspell them. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll see it written and I'll be like, oh, you've missed such and such out. And she'll be like, oh. it'd be things like that those imperfect things are the things that that you love the most they're the things that make that person special to you as they say it's what you what you lack that makes you different you know the most successful sports people it's not what they what they have that makes them successful it's what they lack so you and I might go and do a run and then after 10 miles go oh do you know what we're done we're gonna have to stop now Whereas the best runner in the world will keep running and it's not big, it's because they haven't got that cut off switch. Their, their, their body doesn't go, um, we're tired now. Do you want to stop? No, their body goes, we're tired now. And the brain says, and, and they carry on running. So it's what they lack, not what they have that makes them special. And the same would be said for the person you love. It's what they're imperfect things, which, which, which make them more special and more individual to you that was a couple of things and i know she killed me for saying that but but that you that just literally even me saying it makes me smile because my, my son xavier he's six now and whenever i cut up his toast in the morning i he has uh he has two pieces together another two pieces together so he has two pieces together and i cut them up into 16 squares and he always says to me dad i want 16 squares so come up so he knows the eight and eight makes 16. And when we used to learn this in math, see where eight and eight, 16, blah, blah. So then when he has two lots, he'll go 16, 16 is 32, dad. So he just jokes even more so that Karina used to say eight and eight is 15. So then I'll say to him, tell mum what eight and eight is. <laughs> he'll go, it's 16, mum. Uh, obviously he doesn't quite get the joke yet, but Karina's like, as if to go, oh, I know it's 16. Like, <laughs> so it's that thing. Carrying on that, like that little thing that you and Karina have that in with the, in with your children as well yeah. like that will carry on and then he'll like oh when your kids get older and if they have grandkids that be like another thing that might carry on with them as, as you said just just saying it just makes me smile because it's just one of those things it's a quirk isn't it and it's the quirks the uniqueness it's those that make the person special you know it's not how perfectly they show up at any one time because nobody's perfect so it, it is those those imperfect things that make that person extra special to you you um mentioned about uniqueness did you have any unique proposal ideas or you know did it go to plan was you nervous was you bringing your a game or was you like really 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 nervous <laughs> i was definitely really, really nervous i planned it when we was out in greece uh i got a ring made up and stuff and there was a point near logos beach where we used to go and there's this bar at the top of the logos beach and you go down the rocks and there's kind of like this little um broken stone jetty as such and uh we used to sit there quite often we used to get a drink or, or we used to just come down and just sit there when we used to watch the sunset we used to hire a moped for summer and we used to go from the town in sadari uh, in Corfo, we used to go up into this bit low which is kind of like uh, not that far from the town and such we'd go we'd all go up there the djs and that sort of stuff with our little mopeds and we'd have some little drinks and that this time it all up little bar like a you know with all the all the nice um kind of summer tunes playing and all like the, the chilled kind of music so we used to go there quite a bit what i did was i i went there and i took a couple of glasses of a couple of glasses and one of those little bottles of champagne and i hid it in the rocks at the bottom 
Mm-hmm. And then literally we climbed down this particular occasion. And um, and what was funny was she hadn't done her hair, she hadn't done anything like you know, in that context, like it was a little bit cold. Um, and she even said, like, after I proposed, as if to say, as if to say, all the times she used to do it, you know, like in terms of like I'm not dressed for it, and that, you know, she was in like <laughs> linen trousers and she had a, a like this combined denim jacket, but with um with like different, different like material sleeves on it. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So she had one of those. So she wore this uh with uh, like a hood, like material hood on it, and she had that. So that's what she used to wear when it was a bit colder. So she had that. So she was just dressed in what what you say, like normal 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 everyday clothes. I think we might have even been for a swim prior as well. So her hair probably wasn't looking the, the how she would like it. So yeah, so so of all the times to propose, probably in her eyes, if it was photographed, wouldn't have been the greatest of time. But but as from a surprise element, it, it was it was yeah not knocked it out of the park yeah yeah you would do so myself but but oh 100 percent proper nervous yeah but we we kind of spoken about it for a while anyway because we were together nearly five years when i proposed proposed yeah. so you know we we pr- we pretty much as i said because we we'd been pretty much together from the offset anyway i would say we were very very close you know I, i'd say we built up quite a, quite a good relationship at that point anyway a lot of people that that, and this is no disrespect to anybody that does that, but a lot of people that tend to be in a relationship for a very short period of time and then get married or engaged, if you don't really know the person, it's very difficult to then move forward with that person. You know, if you've not, like, like we lived together prior to getting married and that kind of stuff like that, I think because then you're kind of putting so many more obstacles in the way, but then you get the percentage of people that the same that, that might be together two minutes and then and they, they have children or something, and then they're thinking, well, wait a second, we weren't really solid as a couple to deal with, with having children yet because as, as you and I both know that just brings a whole another level of difficulty to your life I'm glad that we waited and then even waited before we had children there's never a right time to do anything is there you go oh well I, I'm gonna do this then I'm gonna do this then and I'm sure if the majority of people if they look back on their life and they say well when I was younger I said I was gonna want to be married by this age or children by this age I wanted to be rich by this age I wanted to buy my first Ferrari at this age mm-hmm. and they'll probably find that none of those line up, you know, because life has a way of obviously of happening that, as they say, love, love, love happens when you're busy making other plans, the song I wrote, So, but life happens when you're busy making other plans. Things happen. I'm glad that we were together for the period of time that we were before we got engaged, and even though she probably would have preferred to have got engaged quicker, you can't wait for the right time to do anything, but you kind of just have to do it when it happens, you know, and then then that's generally the best time for it to happen. You know, I'm a strong believer in, everything acts for a reason and things just ha- just have a way of working themselves out and i'm sure they'll i'm sure i'll probably be shot down by plenty of people by saying that other people no that's not true but, i mean other than people probably passing away in general everything happens for a reason you know the 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 the, the world works for you not against you though and that's the way i see it there's been times where we've had and you know different different struggles but but if we bring it back down to the to the nitty-gritty the fact that we are a strong couple i think and um and she believes in me and I definitely believe in her, especially from a family sense. I don't think there's anything that would stand in our way. But I think that's more the fact because we know that we're stronger together, not apart. So like you say, we are independents, but one person doesn't win a war at the end of the day, you know, you know without taking it to that analogy. Is the fact is, you know, teamwork makes the dream work is the thing, you know. <laughs> so it well, this even in levels with business, most people whether they assume they're, they're a one person success or that, you know, I made it all on my own. That never happens. Never happens. There's not a single person in this whole entire world, even if they think they are, that they made their success on their own because they had to start somewhere. They had to learn what they learned. They had to have somebody, even if it wasn't indirectly, teach them what they know for them to progress and then meet people along the way that, has, that have helped them in some way or another to get them to where they are. So even though you may have a level of degree of skill that you've then harnessed over a period of time and you've put the time and energy into it yourself above and beyond anyone else, you still need help from others. You never make it anywhere on your own. Yeah. Having that, even if it's just one person in your support system or that one person cheering you on, that makes the world a difference and I don't think anyone who goes out in life thinking that they can do it all on their own they're not looking at the bigger picture because there is other people that are helping you along the way for sure yeah so well you soon find out that you need help I think is the thing and even if you want to be 
a one person company as such, even like your, what you're doing or even what I'm doing, it may be your company and you may be the main person doing your stuff. But the fact is, even in that you still need input from other people as you go along for help, whether it be research, whether it be a support of some description or you're building a website and you don't know how to do it. So then you look on YouTube and you learn it. Yes, that's you building your own company, but 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 you've learned how to do your website from somebody else's many, many, many years of skill and experience. You know, I read a book every couple of weeks on on all stuff to do with health and well-being. So, so my knowledge doesn't come from me just being clever or me going, oh, well, I know that. It's like, well, yeah, but you only know that because you've read books on it. Who wrote the books? And, and how did that person learn that to write the books? They learned it from somebody else. And that person learned it from that person. And that person learned all that from all these other people. So, so in all fairness... You could actually say that every single person that starts a business has a whole army behind all the stuff that you've learned to do this, you know, the podcast, the Zoom thing. You and I are having this Zoom call at the moment. You know, we've been helped to do this. The people that build Zoom, the people that, that build the cameras in our computers, you know, in all fairness, they're helping our business right now. You know, they're helping you and I build our platforms and, and move ourselves forward. You know, every wedding I do, every couple I sing in front of, every every wedding guests that I get up dancing that feature on my videos or my or my reviews and that, they're building my business. They're part, you know, they're part and parcel of my growth. No one can really say that they, that they they've done it all on their own because that's that you that's impossible. You you can have the drive and that to learn the stuff like we just said, but learning the stuff and then putting it into practice, you've still had to learn it from somebody else and vice versa. There is at some point somebody has had to take a, a particular part in the role of getting you where you are. Definitely. I mean, I, I say to myself that I'm a lifelong student and I love to learn. And I think there's one thing learning things, but what are you going to do with that? And I think it's important when you learn something, teach other people. I think that's the way that we should be as human beings teach other people whether it's our children or a wider audience like you and I may have um I know in the next six months or so you've got another exciting project coming up because you're not just a singing waiter you've got ambitions oh, huge not, ambitions yeah. so can you tell us a little bit more about that and how your service may help couples in yeah, the future sure. yeah, yeah. Well, just to finish on that bit that you just said I mean uh, yeah every day every day is a every day is a school day Mm -hmm. and they say knowledge is power but it's not knowledge isn't power knowledge is potential power it's only power when you use it so like exactly what you just said you know reading or something like that you can read as many books as you like or you could learn things that you would like to provide to other people but if you don't take that next step to pass on the information or to or to fail forward as we said you're kind of not utilizing what you've learned it's just wasted knowledge isn't it otherwise you just yeah. where does it go yeah and that's what great. I, I mean, I read books all the time on on stuff uh, to do with health and well-being. I'm a qualified personal trainer. I know a lot about nutrition, breath work, meditation. But the list is endless anyway. You know, I could tick. It's all to do with health and, and health and wellness and stuff. I promise on the fact that I get up every morning ridiculously early to to look after my own health mentally and physically. I, I get up and meditate. I exercise every day. I breath work, all that kind of stuff, so that I can show up better for my friends and family. So my my side hustle as i would probably say that i'm kind of trying to build as a future a future business as well um to give back exactly what you were saying service to others really so i want to basically coach one-to-one -one as well as in groups to helping people develop optimum focus and a positive mindset whilst increasing their energy and fitness levels and enhancing their nutritional needs for an overall better body and mind for generational health so it's basically more about focusing in your on pretty much everything to do with your mind and body for the for the health benefits of your children so generational health meaning uh and, and some people might not have children but for the foreseeable future so 10 most people will go oh i want to go and do a workout uh to look a certain way you know they're sitting on instagram like, cosmetically i want to be like that but that's not necessarily thinking of their internal health mentally or otherwise you know as we know with instagram you know people look at stuff and it makes them anxious because they they, they you know that they, they want to be a certain way or look a certain thing or do a certain thing irrelevant how it makes them think or feel and they're striving to be somebody else not them 
you know so i want to coach people to basically be better versions of themselves so they can be to do less better so to put as much energy in their in their fitness and their health and their mindset and and tips and tricks to do that so that they can then uh, focus on being better for long term i mean a lot of people tend to work very very hard as as i'm sure you and i do but a lot of people tend to work very very hard focusing on what they assume is the most important thing and then overlook their health and their their work you know their mindset you should make time to be healthy otherwise when you're older you will have to make time to be sick and people always overlook uh, pretty much to the detriment as we've just said their health their health seems to always take a back seat but they don't realize that the more time they spend on their health it overspills into every other aspect so that the, the joke i'm sure i mentioned you before is if you pee in one part of the pool you pee in all the pool yes so if you work on one element it affects all the other elements so if you're physically fitter it means that you've got more energy which means you show up better for your friends and family which means you're more productive at work it means you make better decisions it means you have better mood all of those can only make your life better but the less time you spend on it over a degree of time you become useless because the more selfish you are on a regular basis which is giving but not necessarily are you giving to others all the time but you're giving to others as in you're not focused on your own well-being to provide for others you're too busy focusing on everybody else over time you become useless because gradually you get weaker so the, the more time you spend on yourself the more and better you can show up for others so the, the more stronger you can be selfless that's what the coaching is about and i've put together a course called seven ways in seven days to change and with any of the seven modules i can change your life in a week each of those seven modules combine different personal development skills which i can then provide to you but in the same instance i've got a challenge sheet i can provide you with a challenge sheet you provide me with the information and of course it's called trust the process so seven ways in seven days to change i will challenge you that i can change your life in seven days with any of these particular modules seven modules whether it be fitness nutrition mindset although they're all different things but i will be able to change your life in one week as long as you trust the process so you have to trust what i'm telling you to do and you have to do it, otherwise, of course, it won't work. Whenever anybody starts anything, the reason why most people give up is because they don't realise how long it's going to take them to get there. Whereas, say, for instance, you have a baby, you know it takes nine months. You don't run into the hospital after three weeks and go, where's my baby? They'll be like, um, it's nine months. You're like, oh, so you trust the process. You know it's going to take nine months. But most people in business or in fitness, health, as they, they take it, expect or emulate other people and they go well i've been working out for a week i've jumped on the scales i'm still I, I haven't lost three stones i give up or they go i've done this diet didn't work for me you think okay so it didn't work for you but all about the thousands of other people that it did work for so what does that tell you is it the diet or is it you mm -hmm. you're like hmm probably me then and it's more down to the mindset same we said providing it for the couples of with the stress levels they have to deal with planning a wedding it's down to being in a better mindset or a better place to deal with as a couple, all of the things which are suddenly going to come up, which you're all of a sudden going to have to deal with for this big event. So it's trying to help them deal with that better. Couples all of a sudden are now trying to plan this big day. So it could be potentially game changing for them. That sounds amazing. I know we're going to talk more about this when things are up and running. It's such a unique approach as well, because I think with wedding planning, it is stressful. And that's one of my missions is, to make it more easy on couples we neglect ourselves in some respects because we're too focused on that big day and then our mindset and the way that we look at things can drastically drop and so i think we need we need something to help us feel inspired feel motivated feel positive and go into your married life in a more fulfilled and chilled out way i guess I think things things become overwhelming. I think, as we were just saying, the same with with the business thing. People don't know how long something's going to take, and they and they think something's going to be so long, or and they're going to get so quick results. And the same would be said for marriage, so they're going into a wedding or prepping for the wedding. It's mm -hmm. amazing how quickly these things. But at least in that context, if you know the day you can get married, you know you've got a set period of time to organise stuff. You can, but it's then how you find the time. And the same as saying about finding the time to exercise. I'm not expecting anyone's going to get up and do an hour workout. But if you did get up and you did two minutes of jumping jacks, you're going to feel so much better to then do other stuff. So, you know, there's so many different things that you could do, which you can help you do less better, as I'm saying. But it's more the fact of being aware that 
with most things, the time frame isn't the thing you should focus on because most people tend to focus on the goal and it's overwhelming. Like you said, you know, you know, potentially you doing what you're doing as a business, you know, you could sit there and go, well, I'm going to be, my branding is going to be huge and I'm going to be in America and I'm going to be here and I'm going to be here and I'm going to be walking around with a Prada handbag and I'm going to be, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be a size six and all that kind of stuff. But then you could look at that huge picture and you could be like, you know what, I'm never going to be in there. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> so it's trusting that, as I said, you trust process, so process over progress, progress over perfection. So if you, tr if you trust any one element, eventually progress will come and from progress, perfection will come. So it's that the same with said for planning a wedding. You've got such a huge list, as I saw in one of the things that you put up to do with it, one of your planning uh, things that you provide to the, mm -hmm. to the lovely couples. There's so many things that even as wedding suppliers, which I think wedding suppliers seem to overlook uh, when they're promoting themselves, is some wedding couple supplies can be a bit pushy and go, oh, well, you need to get back to us tomorrow or, or you know, because uh, this is the price and that's it. And unless you get back to us, and I understand that everyone's got their business, but it's not like you're going to stop and buying a car or buying a TV, you know, uh, and that person pressurising you to buy. Uh, a wedding, you've got so many other things you need to tick off as well. So every one of the suppliers wants to push you to buy, but in the same context, as a supplier, you should go, well, wait a second, I'm not the only person in this chain. So I've got to kind of come back off the bride and groom and go, I know that you've got these things to sort out. So this is what I offer. Um, and you you have a think on it and then and then you see where it's going to feature in your day if at all. And that's mm -hmm. how most people should approach it. So the fact that they've got all these things that you've got like, like on your planning thing, that in itself is overwhelming. You know, if you give someone a, a five page thing, uh, a go, oh yeah. So now you've got 10 out of it, wedding venue. First of all, you've got to go and get your um, get your celebrant sorted. And they're like, oh, I didn't realise I had to do that. Another thing to add to the list. Oh, and then you're like, oh, blah, 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 another thing to add to the list. And all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a second, I already had this list of 30 things, and now I've got these other things. When am I going to find the time? And you need to help. And he's like, well, I'm at work. And it's like, mm. so it's finding the time to do that. And not only will that build an element of stress trying to organise that, but it's also going to build an element of stress between the two of you, you know? So hopefully my course... And just in general, you know, reaching out and helping people to, you know, with exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're offering is about working together to get the same result. You know, you both know what the result is. It's the big wedding, but the big list. And, that, and you can say, well, you can deal with that. You can do that. You know, it's well, one thing. But then finding the time on top of your normal day life, because all of a sudden you've decided you want to get married. And some people go, oh, I'm going to get married. I'm going to chat at the same time. And it's like. Uh, do you realize so that? much going on <laughs> yeah do you realize that you have, when you have children so it's that isn't it yeah oh we're going to move house at the same time you're like okay people tend to do what you do not what you say and I, I focus a lot on my physical my physical fitness my mental fitness because I make a point of doing that every morning so I can chart better so I've already honed all that skill in and conditioned that so I can do that uh so that is what I can then obviously teach as well as all the other stuff that I know to help couples or help people in general deal with certain elements so they can become better at organizing they may have an immense skill at organizing i was at a wedding networking event the other day and i was talking to someone and i said you could probably ask at least 10 people in the room how well they organize their business but if you turn around to them and said do any of you have a daily routine or, or ritual that is based around your physical and mental well-being and i'm sure probably eight out of ten of them will probably say no but it's more the fact of finding the time to then basically pare down and focus on what's the most important thing and normally that you should make the most important thing the most important thing you and i could speak on this all day and <laughs> i know we'll have more and more podcasts yes we inspire nice. more people for sure yes. where can my couples come and find you because i know there'll be people wanting to know about not only uh your vip waiting service and we'll be talking about your coaching again in the future but where can we find you in regards to vip Wait well, VIP Waiters on my Instagram as VIP Waiters Live and I've got a website vipwaiters.co.uk. Um so yeah, that's that's the that's two main spaces. Yeah, uh, website's got stuff on it. Instagram's obviously got you know videos and video, you know, couples reviews and stuff. So that's the that's 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 the best place. That's the best place to get there. Do you have one final tip for my couples at all in regards to stress management regarding weddings? Just look after each other. I would, you know, I would, I would say main focus is check in and make sure 
that you're both happy with what's going on. I was speaking to some couples the other week at a wedding fair and I was saying it was about when they're picking wedding venues. A lot of people might in their mind go, oh, I want to get married at a bar, I want to get married here, I want to get married here. And I said to the couples, when you go around to any venue, the first thing you should ask is how many weddings they hold. If they hold too many, they're probably not very personable. But secondary, as a couple, you're in love. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, what you're doing, whether you're shopping, sunbathing, having a cup of coffee, you're in love and you're enjoying the time together. So the same would be said for, for a wedding venue. If you connect with the people that run the venue, because they, they make or break your day, that's where you should get married. Because it doesn't matter where you get married, it's the people that you're surrounded with that makes the difference and how they run your day, you know? They, they, they care. So if they care and they give you 110%, you don't have to worry about it. So it's all about the people that you're with, not the place. There's going to be a lot of stress with a wedding, as we know. But just remember, the reason why you're getting married is to, in theory, underline the fact that you are a couple. So just remember at any one point, you are a couple. You do things together. As we said, teamwork makes the dream work. So just remember that whatever, because people argue about all sorts of stuff. But if you're arguing about the fact that you're going to be getting married and you're getting married to underline the fact of your love, just remember that the reason why you're getting married is because you're an amazing couple. So a cup. So that's what you should mainly focus on. All the other stuff is just peripheral vision. It's all the, it's all the, it's all the tinsel as such, you know, all, all, all the main concern is the fact that you two work together well, everything else comes from that, you know, getting married, anything else, honeymoon, whatever else, it's all just the, the icing on the cake, pardon the pun, it's just, it's just the extras, you know, if, if you're, if you're too, if you're arguing too much before you get married, well then you're almost breaking apart the main reason why you're getting married, you know, so just keep it at, at the forefront of, of making sure and checking in that you're both you're both happy you're both you're both on the same page you know mm -hmm. and that, that's it and also the biggest thing is make sure you follow kelly yay <laughs> because, uh, she's got some great stuff and uh and it's always good to follow because uh, she's full of tips and tricks and all the all the information is obviously very 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 handy we rise by lifting others so that's right that's thank the, you so uh, much thing. for that I promise my listeners I did not pay him to say that. <laughs> no, she did. She definitely did. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today, Nelson. I can't wait to speak to you again and look at this course that's coming soon. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Kelly. Thank you ever so much for your time and you enjoy the rest of your day.